Okay, so now that we've covered uh, integers and the two different ways that we can print stuff, the sort of more advanced way and the, oh, kind of drag that to the wrong location and the more uh, early friendly way, um, then we will, yeah, because see this way you don't have to worry about percent %d's or the different types that you need to be using. You just put in the variable with these here and it just works. Um, anyway, so back to the different types of variables. So then we have floats. So floats, as you might guess, um, uh, so is uh, decimal numbers. I can't spell decimal. Right, I'm sad. I went and looked up how to spell decimal. Um, don't take my spelling skills as a point on my math and programming because my, ma my math and programming is pretty darn good, but my, math, my spelling has just never been a strong suit of mine. Um, so decimal. So decimal numbers can be decimals. It's pretty straightforward. Um, they can have uh, a certain amount of decimals after this point. So this brings me to doubles. So doubles are bigger decimals. Um, so yeah, basically the main difference between a float and a double is that you can have longer decimals. I, I'm not sure the exact limit that you can have uh, for f doubles, but I know oh, I know in memory, but I'm not sure like the exact number of characters. Um, in that you can go with decimals um, but yeah I'll explain the difference further when we get into talking about memory um, but for now just know that these are you can hold a larger decimal number um, than you could with uh, a float so doubles are just uh, bigger floats um, but often I don't find I need bigger floats uh, float usually gets the job just fine done just fine so I don't really use doubles that much but yeah so float is just your uh, is just a decimal number and you can do it with printf or you could um, th this is the only problem with um, C out is it gets a lot longer so put a space and then put in decimal and then if we run this you'll see that we get oh it might help if we put in the percent %f into the printf um, percent %f and then we'll close this and run this and we get these two um, so when you use C out it'll only print the number of characters that you gave it uh, whereas printf will give uh, the maximum number of characters um, so to fix this with printf you can put in uh, 0 0.1 and this will determine the number of points after the decimal place so the one is how many decimal places afterwards so you could say five decimal places and it'll show one two three four five places um, or you could say uh, two and it'll show two points after the decimal place um, just a way of controlling that um, and that's decimals um, chars are characters so what is a character so a character is pretty much just one letter so with single quotation you can put in an A and that is a character so you can take a character, you can put it into this list to print as well, um, character, and you can do uh, percent %c for character. Or you could come in here and let's just copy this section here. Oh, I meant to copy, paste, paste in character, and then we'll run that. And you can see a, a is what comes out. You can have this be h. As long as it's just one letter, that's a character. When you get into longer than one character, then that's what like one of these. This is multiple characters. This is called a string, and this is, strings are uh, uh, presented by double quotations. So when you have double quotations, that's a string. Single quotations, that's a character. Um, so that's pretty much characters. Uh, we'll get into characters, how to make uh, strings out of characters and such later on. But for for now, that's a character. It, just explaining it at this point, we probably won't get into using characters till like lesson seven or eight. Um, bool, bool is pretty much like a light switch. Um, it's really a uh, light switch. Um, that's not exactly what it is, but a bool is pretty much just on and off, true or false. Um, I don't think you can print a bool with a print statement. Um, I went and tried to look up bool but I couldn't find a clear answer on it honestly there's not that often that you're gonna want to print a bool anyways um, so it's not a huge deal but co it seems to be able to do it but printf I'm not sure how you would um, 
people who do know maybe comments down below um, but yeah it's not not a huge deal don't worry about it um, there's not gonna be a lot of points where you're gonna want to print bools because bools are more often used in sort of operators so um, logic statements like if so what exactly is if let's take a moment and I'll break this down in pieces so an if if is the is the sort of declaration of like this this logic statement uh, you're basically saying if something execute something so what you're doing is you're doing a conditional statement here so a conditional statement basically means true or false so bools fit into this nicely so if we have something like light switch um, or actually call it its proper name boolean is what bool stands for um, so you have like a boolean and um, you, this here is like your on off so you have true or false if the statement is true it will execute what is between these squiggly brackets um, I should also mention semicolons so you'll notice that I've been adding semicolons all this time all along here so basically at the end of lines you put semicolons when you're doing stuff except for if statements if statements you don't need a semicolon here this was a lot of confusion when I did the first set of lessons I didn't explain this clearly is that there is no semicolons at the end of if statements generally most logic statements don't have semicolons at the end of them um, but stuff like these guys do um, because these are lines of code not that this isn't a line of code but this is more of a logic operator something's um, something to determine how to execute code so you have this if a condition which should be true or false and you execute code so if we wrap um, this these two print ways of doing prints um, inside of shoot okay so quote and yeah so we have squiggly bracket for the if um, when we wrap this stuff in this this here it won't get executed um, uh, won't get executed unless you unless this statement is true so right now it's false so if we run this you'll see that the doesn't print anything if we change this to true then we get the prints so basically this these here are scope um, uh, inside of this scope for the if statement is what is going to be decided based on this variable so anything within these brackets um, you could also sort of show it this way um, some people like to do this so that you can see that there's this sort of idea of having the, the the open scope and then you end the scope. But honestly, I like having them line up so you can sort of see exactly what is in what scope. But you have this scope here um, for the if statement, and this is what it's going to determine on. Um, you can also do operations based on uh, uh, integers and uh, different things like this. So you could have integer equal equal... Um, let's actually make integer just three. Uh, if we say integer integer equal three, then this is going to be a true statement because they are equal three. Um, so this is the equal uh, or not the equal. It's the equivalent operator. So two equal signs is equivalent. If you do this, which is a very common mistake that I'm going to sort of say keep your eye out for, you're going to end up having it so that you're going to just do integer equals three, which is a which will return true. So this is a successful operation. So this will always return true. You'll always get in the if statement. What you want is equivalent. This will actually do a check on integer to see if it is equal to three, and if they are equal, it'll return true. If they're not equal it'll return false you can also do the opposite this here is the not equal to symbol um, so if integer is not equal to three so if integer was anything else it, anything else other than three it'll get into this statement um, but it is equal to three so if we ran this you would see that it doesn't do anything if we say equal then it would do something and just to show the not again if it well, uh, wrong character. There we go. Uh, if this would say that, oh, not a T in there, but just some random number, um, then it would get in because it's not equal to three. You can also do uh, less than. So if integer is less than three, um, it's not less than three. It is three. So let's. But if we had something like one, that would be true. It would get in. If we had something like fifty-one, uh, it wouldn't get in. Uh, you can also do less than or equal to uh, the equal sign would come after and then if this was exactly three uh, it would get in 
So just to show this, it gets in, take away the equals operator, doesn't get in. So less than or less than and equal to. Depending on uh, what you're doing, those are the two ways. You can also do greater than, of course, uh, greater than three. Uh, it's not greater than three, it is three, so it wouldn't get in, but six. You can see it got in. You could do uh, one and then it won't get in. And then you could do something like um, three and then you can obviously have the equals operator you'll notice it doesn't look like um, this that's wrong uh, you'll get that little squiggly letting you know it's unknown expression um, yeah you want it like this so the equal sign is always on the right side whether you're doing greater than or uh, greater than or less than and so this would get in because it's greater than or equal to three and it is equal to three so it gets in um, and then so you can combine these conditional statements together though so you could say something like if integer is equal three and you could do and these two symbols mean and and boolean so this means the both these statements must be true so let's just put brackets around these so you can more clearly see each statement and so you have this set up like this so you have integer equal three and boolean this means both statements must be true in order for it to get into the statement and right now they are but let's change one of them to false and you'll now see it doesn't happen so it both have to be true the other one you can do for comparison is you can also do or so you can do integer equal three or boolean so this means if either statement is true then it'll get in and integer is equal to three so it gets in even though boolean is false but if we change this to say like five and now this one is false as well both are false it doesn't get in so the or operator if any statement is true then it gets in the and operator all statements must be true for it to get in um, just show the and operator again um, you can also chain these together which can get fairly complicated but let's show this um, we can also do something like um, let's make another integer actually and call it uh, integer 2 and we'll have integer 2 be equal to uh, say 7 and integer 2 so if boolean or if integer 2 is not equal to 7 um, just going to take a step back here zoom out one so that we can see this a little better um, so we have what does this say this says if integer 3 and boolean or integer 2 is not equal to 7 so let's just walk through this so starting in the statement here so this is all wrapped in a bracket so this is one statement so that we have this one statement and we have this one statement and this could get chained down again but uh, for the sake of explaining we'll only chain once um, so we got boolean and integers so this is an or statement in here so if either of these two statements is true this whole thing will be true so boolean is false integer uh, 2 is not equal to 7 that is also false because it is 7 and so this will return false and because this is an and uh, let's change this back to three so that this would be true this would be true this would be false we wouldn't get in but if either of these statements were true so let's change this to like 17 or something then this would be true this would be false it's an or operator this whole statement will return true so this would be true on this side of the and statement and this side would also be true and it would get in just to show that uh, let's close what's already running and as you see it does print it gets in um, so that's if statements so uh, that would be I guess the full remake of lesson three so the moving into lesson four now